Good evening, it's Two Wolves. It's a very stormy night. I'm reporting from Idaho on 16 October 2012. And tonight, I wanted to talk to you about new attitudes that I am seeing developing on the Washington coast. And this story has got a subtitle, subtitle, Callous Coast, Callous Coast. I sent the boys off to the storm, rainy, wind-tossed, rather gray, but energized Washington coast where we used to live as we all sometimes get homesick. That's me being a totem pole at La Push about two years ago before all the Fukushima tragedy unfolded. We do get homesick, so I sent them to the coast to sniff around and see what they could find out what might be developing in regard to attitudes and discoveries on the Olympic Peninsula in regard to the tsunami debris. And obligingly, they fetched me back a story. www.peninsuladailynews.com Today's story by familiar and excellent journalist Arwen Rice for the Peninsula Daily News and this paper is printed well the paper is from Port Angeles Clallam and Jefferson counties title tickets selling out fast for tsunami debris film what tickets selling out fast for tsunami debris film what the trailer for a documentary film about Clallam and Jefferson County's Pacific Coast and incoming tsunami debris has been released online and tickets for the world premiere are on sale. Ikatsu, the roadless coast, was filmed on the Olympic Peninsula coastline in June, July, and August and followed a team of three sea kayakers as they surveyed the West End beaches to track debris from the 2011 Great Japan Earthquake and Tsunami. Oh. We know this as the Fukushima tragedy, right? Well, the new politically correct name for it is the 2011 Great Japan Earthquake and Tsunami. The film trailer can be seen online at vimeo.com 49922487. A world premiere screening of Ikatsu, The Roadless Coast, will be held at the Grand Cinema. Here's the address in Tacoma, said Ken Campbell, one of the expedition's three members. Tickets can be ordered by phone at this number. It's going to premiere November 14th, and the 7 p.m. showing is sold out. Tickets for the 8.30 p.m. showing are going fast, Campbell said. There will be showings of the film in Clallam County in February, but the exact dates and times are not yet scheduled, he said. The three kayakers traveled 60 miles of mostly roadless coastline in four trips from Nia Bay, home of the Macaw, to the north to Ruby Beach to the south and around Destruction Island. This is all the northern end of the Olympic Peninsula. Olympic Peninsula. In July, Campbell said that with few roads to access the coast in that area, trash built up with little or no dumping, monitoring, or cleanup, so it was a good place to track ocean-borne debris. The debris traveled ocean and wind currents after the March 2011 disaster. Okay, that's only the ones we know about. Lightweight, wind-blown items from a debris field and so on, began to arrive in October or September 2011, and Seattle oceanographer Curtis Ebbesmeyer is predicting now, evidently, that the main body of the wreckage will begin to arrive now this winter. The team reported that they found sports balls, plastic toys, and a pile of wreckage that might have been a partially intact Japanese house before being pounded into wreckage by waves on the beach. Campbell's an author specializing in the Pacific Northwest outdoors. Jason Goldstein is the or Goldstein is the team's cartographer and GIS specialist. Steve Weilman is a documentary filmmaker and photographer. The data gathering and sample collection were coordinated with members of the science advisory team, including Ebbis Meyer, the National NOAA, and the Coastal Watershed Institute. 
Ikatsu is a Japanese word that translates as united as one. In other words, we are all related, right? Campbell said, noting that debris from the Japan disaster arriving on the North American beaches shows the linkage between the two people. Oh, my. All right. Well, I went to look at, see what this was all about. The Ikatsu Project, http colon backslash backslash ikatsu dot wordpress dot com. Connecting the dots. And that is, that's ironic. Three kayakers traveling the roadless coast of the Olympic Peninsula documenting the debris from the tsunami as it washes ashore on remote northwest beaches. Working in cooperation with several different scientific organizations, including NOAA and the Coastal Watershed Institute. And here's their hope. It is our hope that information gleaned from this adventure will add to our understanding of ocean currents, waterborne pollution, and the often mysterious ways that nature and civilization interact. John Muir said, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the, in the universe. When we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe. Very true. This is an artist's rendering of the La Push area. Well, it actually looks like it was done with the camera and photoshopped in the camera. That's pretty. That's near the push. Okay. They include a trailer for the movie, Ikatsu, The Roadless Coast. Here's a tip of one of the three kayaks. It's up and running. I hope it gets you fired up to see the movie. Get your tickets quick. There's the poster for the movie. And here's, um, this is Arches. This is near... Uh, Destruction Island, or possibly maybe James Island on the Washington coast. I've got I've taken pictures in that area just like that. It's better to be lucky than good. Okay, so this is part of their philosophy for this team, right? It's better to be lucky than good. Well, you can really see right here what's happening in human consciousness. And so I have saved my editorial for toward the end of the of this work. Thank God for our YouTube Truther family, our network, our family, and the larger community. All of us with profound love for others, hearts, conscience, investigative natures, and a heart for the truth and courage. Because it would seem that now the onus is on all of us, as it has been, not only to get the truth out, but to keep everything about this horrible tragedy, this human tragedy, in proper perspective. Obviously, these individuals and Hollywood are not. You know, I'm a woman who likes an eco-film as well as the next person, but I won't be seeing this one. The Hollywoodization of... The Fukushima tragedy. Now, being two wolves, you know me, I, I do two of everything. So there is a sidebar. And um, a family member of mine who lives on the Olympic Peninsula gave me this story. And she, this person, who I'm trying to protect by not using pronouns, this person does not take pictures. So this person didn't get pictures of what they found. However, this person has quite an eye for two antiques and things of quality and social justice okay so this is just a generic picture from google images of a thrift shop well we all thrift shop what do you look for oh dishes you know antiques pretty lamps and such some thrift shops also are charity thrift shops as this one is that my relative went into and that particular thrift shop has shelves shelving usually full of off-date past date used canned food and they do give the food and bread and such away free this is not that shop it's just an example from google images so okay well we have a picture of a thrift shop and food donation shelves what one doesn't usually find on the shelves would be tsunami debris and just to refresh our memories you know tsunami debris this is just google.ca search pictures of tsunami debris and because my relative didn't get pictures of what was found at the shop but described it as bottles with Japanese lettering that was obviously tsunami debris probably was something like this my relative tells me that many people are collecting the debris 
decorating their homes with it, putting it out in their yards. Therefore, I suppose it would be a prime thing to sell in a thrift shop. Selling in a thrift shop. Okay, so have you got the picture in the charity thrift shop on the shelves that contain food on the shelves with the food tsunami debris for sale? Thank you for listening. This is Two Wolves Out.